Welcome, Ashley. It's great to Hi. have you as a guest on Coffee with Creatives. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Me too. So I wanted to start off with, and I always like to start off with a bit of a background into your creativity and your journey as a photographer. So can you give us a bit of a backstory and how you became a photographer? Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, my story is quite familiar to a lot of uh, mothers who are also photographers. I had my first baby, he'll be 18 this year, crazy. Um, And I started documenting him when I found an old film camera of my husband's uh, in the closet. And so that sort of started my journey. And as I got going, I quickly developed a love for it and started shooting clients about 12 years ago. Um, And so that's sort of how I started it as a career. And then we had um, two more children that are born 11 months apart. And although I was sort of already, you know, steps into my my career already, I think that that's really where I started to hone in on my documentary and personal work after they were born as I was trying to um, capture our everyday so that the busyness and, you know, when you've got that many kids and that kid kids that are that close together there is a there is a blur of fog that happens and so I was desperately trying to hang on to that and was using photography as a way to do that so wow and so you were professionally shooting or you started to professionally shoot at this time as well or was this mostly all personal work just just before the two little ones were born I was professionally shooting and taking on clients mostly families and some weddings things like that and then trying to balance all of that at the same time as and after my our third child was born um, that was when I started started shooting births so my career kind of went from like something um, sort of you know part-time to like you know sort of skyrocketing to where it was it was hard to find a a balance in there Mm. it was it was a busy few years for sure (laughs) and so now where, where would you say you are now now it's birth family photography documentary photography yeah birth family um documentary day in the life work um and you know now that we're 12 years in and and my children are or or older there's definitely more of a balance there so mm, great good. yeah awesome so I wanted to share some of your images first and foremost and just to invite everyone into seeing your images and then I'll have some questions around that and then I would love yeah. to definitely dive further into your career so this image here right I absolutely love this uh can you share with us the background and the story of this image here? So this image um, is part of my 365 project. It's uh, part of my collection of personal works. And it was actually taken, oh, I would say about this time uh, in 2020. It was about April of 2020. It was the first time that, that uh, me and the the two smaller kids had ventured outside of the home and outside of our little <laughs> sanctuary here and we found uh, we went to a beach that you know didn't have any people at it and you know the kids were throwing rocks and then all of a sudden the skies kind of opened up and the rain came down and they didn't have bathing suits and I just said I'd just strip down and go in and they were just just feeling that freedom after being at home and you know not knowing what's going on in the world it just I think all of us just needed that that moment right and um this this photograph per, per perfectly encapsulates that moment for me and for them as well they remember it vividly so it's definitely one of my very favorites oh, amazing yeah I love uh I love the edit on it but just the the feeling the emotion the the raindrops in in the ocean and all just the the movement that's within it it's really yeah. striking and, and really beautiful thank um, you could you share with us a little bit around your setup for this because obviously it's raining it's wet can you bring us <laughs> well, into you know what <laughs> session I just I go with the flow and I just have yeah. you know I keep 
my gears with me all the time. And yeah. so, you know, I have uh, in my bag, it's always got a 24 millimeter in it and an 85. That's how I roll. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was shooting and constantly wiping my camera off um, with my, my sweater. <laughs> and cause it really, it was a nice, it, it, I didn't, it wasn't supposed to rain. It literally just all of a sudden downpoured. And mm -hmm. so I wasn't really as prepared for the rain as maybe what I would have liked. Um, but yeah, I was just, just trying to keep things dry. And this was shot on the, on a 24. So. Yeah. I love, uh, love embracing the, how you embrace the moment here. And even though it was, <laughs> <laughs> even though it's raining you know just like really uh documenting that that moment and and going for it anyway yeah that's what it's all about definitely okay great i will uh i'll go to the next image here mm -hmm. so i love uh <laughs> yeah i love just the closeness of this image and when we spoke the other day, you know, you were, you were sharing me, sharing with me a bit around this image and I was quite surprised. So yeah, bring, bring us into the story. here. <laughs> so this uh, image, um, my son was homesick from school and um, baths in our house are a bit of a sanctuary. We're all the kids. I have this ginormous, beautiful bathtub surrounded by plants, and it's definitely our our peaceful place. It's a bit. It's our church for sure. And so Tate got into the tub and and uh, kind of fell asleep. He really wasn't feeling well, and I wanted to capture that. I actually, how I captured it is that I actually got in the tub with him, mm -hmm. and I had my camera inside my underwater housing, so I was able to submerge my camera in the water and uh and really really get into that moment and he he didn't even move I don't even know if he thought I was there I slipped in and I slipped out and I let him just have his have his moment of peace in the bathtub so yeah it's a really really beautiful peaceful moment it almost like looks quite meditative and just yeah. has this amazing sense of calmness and stillness to it which uh, yeah. which I love but I, yeah I was surprised to hear that he was he was asleep and, and that you got in as well <laughs> yeah, I just to... sort of slipped in and submerged yeah. and then came out and I yeah I was really pleased with with the image it's one of we actually I have it in my bathroom now I oh yeah I printed it uh on a glass canvas and it's in the bathroom so fantastic so back to the black and whites can you share the story behind this one yeah so this uh is one of our favorite cliff jumping spots we live on vancouver island so we've are we're so lucky to just be surrounded by all this amazing beauty and and places where the kids can just adventure and be themselves this water is very cold it is glacier fed um it's about if anybody's been to tofino it's it's halfway to tofino um and it is this the water is crystal clear. Maybe it's black. This photo is black and white, but it's um, like an orangey, uh, an orange, uh, it's not orange, a uh, greeny blue color. It's just incredible. So that's why the clarity of this image is so good because the water is so cold. Um, and so Tate was cliff jumping. And of course I was under the water with my gear and trying to, just trying to keep warm. They were in and out, and so they weren't finding it as cold, but I had definitely gone numb at one point. Um, and then he he jumped and I submerged and 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 we got the shot. So wow. <laughs> yeah. Often if the water's warmer and there's, you know, if the water's warmer and there's more people in it, you won't get that kind of clarity. And so mm -hmm. this is, you know, one of the instances where it's like this is this is the spot where you're gonna get this like incredible underwater image. It's amazing. You know, I was thinking about how cold your son must have felt, but you forget sometimes <laughs> that the are in there too. <laughs> yeah. Waiting. And for some reason, kids just don't feel cold the same way that adults do. But yeah, I just, I just keep, keep paddling just to keep warm, but. Love it. Yeah. Love it. A lot, just so many beautiful details in here. The bubbles, uh, the raindrops at the top. Are those, are those raindrops at the top? They're not raindrops. I think that's... that they're just residual, yeah, uh, splashes, you know, because okay. it comes down and there's oh, a of course. At the top, right? So, yes. yeah, it was def it was a warm day, thank God. Um, but yeah, so mm. that's, 
Yeah. Amazing. Could you bring us a bit into your editing process for this? So you've shot this as a raw, you've converted it to black and white. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the highlights and, and the brightness of, of the subject, your son, is, is really beautiful. Could you bring us a little bit into your editing process, uh, just, yeah. just as a bit of a background and what it takes to, to edit an image like this? Well, I really, I knew that I wanted this image to be black and white. When I saw it in color, it just didn't, um, it didn't have the same intensity towards him. Um, and so I, I'm a high contrast black and white girl, definitely um, very sharp. Um, I don't do a lot of sort of film black and white. And so I knew that I wanted, once I converted it to black and white and sort of brought, you know, brought down my blacks and that sort of stuff that it, the the focus would really zoom in and bring you right to the center of the screen where he's coming down. When it was color, it sort of just got a little bit lost. There was some variations in the blues and, and greens. And so I knew for sure that I, that I wanted this one in black and white. So. Right. And what does your, how does your son reflect on this, uh, on this image? He loves it. Yeah, we had it framed for a while. We have a constant like ever evolving frames and canvases around the house. I think it's really important, especially when you're um, shooting your children and that you have this visual for them around all the time. And so it was it was a long, long lasting one in, in one of the frames for a while. And he loves it. I think actually it's he's got it in his room, too. So oh, it's great. a great favorite of ours as well. Great. So just while I'm bringing up the final image, you mentioned that you have your images at home. I can see some behind you there, which is, which is beautiful. Share with us a bit of your process into how you decide which prints go where. I don't really do it as a family. Okay. Um, only cause sometimes I think even the process on my own takes a lot of time. <laughs> so if I have to bring in four other opinions, but I Perfect. do know which ones are their favorite. This one in particular is a favorite of my son's. And so I knew for sure that that would be one that I would want to hang for him. Um, and it just happened to, to go with, you know, especially like in this kind of situation where you've got six, you have to have them flow. Um, but there is, there's a constant turnover, usually seasonally in the home of, um, framed images. And then, um, when we talk a little bit more, we'll dive into a little bit more of my 365 project, but mm -hmm. I print every single year in a book for them to continually um, go over. Wow. And so there's 365 pages to each book. And not only am I sharing um, images, but I also usually will write something. Sometimes it's very simple, like, um, you know, just a memory from the day, or sometimes it'll be sort of these more in-depth um, sort of journal type keeping where I'm sharing my thoughts about one of them or us as a family. And so it becomes this almost like a love letter mm. um, to our family. And so they have those out all the time so that they are constantly able to go through and, and see because they don't have social media. And so, you know, it is their way of, I almost feel like it's uh, my way of showing them how I love them. It's, mm. you know, how I see them through, through my lens and, and as a mother. So um, it's really important to me to have all that available to them. And it also, you know, it, I've been doing this 365 project for nine years. And of course, over that time, now I have preteen and teenager children. And over that time, somebody somewhere along the line will not want to have their photo taken yeah. for whatever reason. And I think it really just brings it back to for them you know, and I have never bribed a day in my life. I've never bribed them to do anything. But I think what we, what I do do is talk to them about the importance of this project and why I do what I do and how the photos make them feel and the importance of it for them when they're older. And that um, is very prevalent in our home with what is surrounding us. And so it just makes sense to them right away. So that's incredible. I love that. Uh, final image here. Ah, <laughs> oh, this one. Um, so this was is a self portrait, um, with my three children. It was taken in our dining room, and I wonder actually if I can split this, switch the screen around for you in a minute. But okay. um, it was taken in our dining room where where I actually take quite a few of our photos, and it literally took five minutes. 
Um, I set the camera up. I had talked to them a little bit beforehand about what I expected of them. And so I just said, you know, this is what I want to do. I'm going to be turned around. I just kind of want you guys to pile on to me. Um, you know, we're going to just take a few photos and then carry on with your day. And so it literally took five minutes. Um, I think I maybe took 20 frames, maybe 30 frames, and this image came out of it. Um, it is probably um, one of the most important and if images that I've ever taken in my career. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely a favorite of all of ours. It it has some strong accolades with it. It did, was um, awarded one of National Geographic's favorite images of 20, 2019, I think. Wow. Um, so uh, it's definitely, yeah, one of my most cherished, cherished images ever. So. Beautiful. Can, can you tell us, why this image is so important to you? I think it just really speaks to uh, me as a mother and an artist. And, um, you know, I have, as, as most mothers, I have this close bond with my kids. Um, I love the way that they are, you know, I, my back is turned, so it's not really about me, but they have their, their eyes towards the camera and they've each got, you know, their hands on me, they're just touching me slightly. There's sort of a, a safeness around it. Um, it just gives me even, even like, even as soon as you bring it up, like it just brings that little butterfly in my stomach. And I think that that's what photography should do to people. And so this, this image encompasses all that for me. And that's what I hope. Those are the kind of images that I hope to give to my clients and, and, you know in my in my line of work so and a great segue as well into that because I do want to talk about how these this project this 365 you documenting your family has really shaped your business now so yeah and with clients requesting similar sort of images so how did that happen and how were you sharing these images with others such that your personal work became your client work yeah so I like I said I've been doing this I've been shooting this 365 for nine years this is my ninth year and um when I started um you know it was really a way for me to slow down time and for me to um be not only creating this legacy for my children um but also as an artist to be building on my skills and my artistry, right? So if, you, if you're if you shooting every day, there is no way that you're not going to get better as an artist. And so um, it was a conversation, obviously, the kids were quite young at the time, but it was a conversation with my husband about, you know, what, how I was gonna do this, was I gonna share it? Because that's, you know, that's a big thing. And we decided I do share it every day. So I share it on my Facebook and my Instagram every day. So people have essentially been following our life for nine years. And while it was doing all these incredible things for me and my family, it was definitely building on my skills as a photographer and people were watching this as it was happening. And at the time I was about, you know, three or four years into some just family and wedding work and knew that that really wasn't, um, what I was supposed to be doing. And so I st slowly started to um, not take as many weddings and start shooting more families, more in a documentary fashion, uh, sort of a documentary lifestyle fashion as people were, they were, you know, messaging me and wanting to book me purely for how I was capturing my own life. And they were wanting me to come in and capture their, their life just the same. So that feels like a a huge compliment to me and it and it you know when when you're doing something that you're passionate about and people can see your passion they want a little piece of that and so it just you know reconfirms that I'm on the right path you know so and I let and it you know hardly feels like work because I'm just doing what I am doing every day you just in some with fresh subjects <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely <laughs> yeah. at, at the beginning what kind of challenges did you face? Because you know your family very intimately. You're documenting them every day. You're sharing it every day. And then you meet another family and you 
you may not know them as well, or they yeah. they may be completely, uh, they may have been following you for several years and and completely brand new to you. But how do you gain that level of intimacy and approach uh, a day in the life with a family? Well, you know, I think that although sharing your family is not for everybody, I think what it has done, and because my social media presence is just very real. And so I feel like when you're shooting birth and when you're shooting documentary day in the life work, um, people already have a sense of who I am before I even step out of my car. And so um, I think that then you're attracting the right kind of clients. And so when I walk into somebody's home, I just, I get right in there. I feel at home already. Um, I make people feel at ease right away. Um, and so I just, I just get to work. And there are some preliminary conversations beforehand, like, you know, what's important to you? What, what are some daily things that you do as a family that you definitely don't want to forget 20 years down the road? Like there's those kind of conversations that happen, but I think that there is just a certain level of comfort that comes from just being a little bit vulnerable and sharing part of your life so that your clients already have a really good sense of who you are ahead of time. It really just breaks down that barrier right away. Yeah. So. Love that. Thanks for sharing that. When you first started your first ever 365 project, what was the yeah. purpose and how did you maintain momentum? Oh goodness. It, it feels crazy because the little ones were little and you know, like two and three, I think. And, um, I just remember some days like just not even knowing how I was making it through, but it was, it was therapeutic in a way because as parents, sometimes you don't behave the way that you had hoped. Sometimes you don't handle things the way that you would hope. Sometimes most days are less than perfect. And so I would be actively shooting throughout the day. My camera was always out, always in a central location, ready to go. I took it with me everywhere. Um, you know, I was shooting in Costco and the grocery store. Like, I mean, we just went everywhere with us. And um, often at the end of the day, once everybody was asleep, that was the time for me to edit and reflect. And, you know, then I would share the image and I would share the images with some thoughts on my day. And it really was a way for me to work through myself, motherhood, our days, um, myself as an artist. And so um, that was, that was a piece of it that was unexpected to me. Um, but it was worth it. Like the challenges were, it was, it seemed big and heavy and a lot at the time, but as we were just kind of moving through our days and I got into a bit of a rhythm, it, it kind of unfolded itself into something much greater than what I would have ever imagined. Yeah. So it sounds like it was very much a journaling process as well, like combining yeah. journal with, oh, 100%. with yeah. these images. Yeah. Uh, do you have any other type of journaling process or, or is it very much, this is it? This is kind of it. Um, it, I, it, it's been enough at this, at this time in my life and the kids journal, which is great. Um, but this has definitely been, um, enough of a sort of release or journaling avenue for me. And, and especially, you know, you and I talked a little bit the other day about, um, self-portraits and so at about year two in my uh 365 journey what I really noticed what was missing in the year was me um and so at that point in time I started incorporating some self-portraits 52 actually so they're you know one a week for the year and that was a huge eye-opening um therapeutic experience as well um that was also very unexpected what were some of the eye-opening moments that you oh well I think especially when you're in the thick of of parenting and self-employment and you know um you know partnership and all those sorts of things um the last thing you want to do is photograph yourself <laughs> you know it's but I, I found that in the moments where I really didn't want to do one where I really had to push myself to take a self-portrait that was the times when I really needed it the most 
And so, you know, unexpected things would happen. I'd set up, you know, the interval timer and I would just kind of let it go and, you know, um, sort of just be free and be myself. And, and there was definitely like a release. And I think, you know, when you were talking about like body image issues and, you know, identity issues and all those sorts of things, like it has helped me tremendously to just be more confident, more self-aware. And, and I think that that in turn also helps my, you know, my clients, I photograph a lot of mothers that are in a lot of vulnerable moments in their life. And, and so I think just my self-confidence and how I've come through this definitely translates really well to, you know, the mothers that I photograph. Incredible. So with gaining self-confidence through this, you were journaling, visually journaling your family. Mm -hmm. You began journaling yourself yeah. through these self-portraits. This is something you continue to do now as well. Okay, yeah, and absolutely. the practicalities of that, is that something that every Sunday at 2 p.m., that's when you take self-portrait or how does how does that work? No, it just kind of, it, you know, it just kind of happens. And I don't, like, it doesn't have to be weekly. I'm taking a self-portrait. By the end of the year, if I've got 52, perfect. Like, mm. and there has been some years where like Christmas comes and I'm like six self-portraits behind. And so <laughs> there's a lot of me between Christmas and New Year's. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and sometimes they're like, for instance, you know, one night I was braiding my daughter's hair. Like after she has a bath, I braid her hair in French braid. So she's ready to go in the morning. And, and I started to braid and I thought, oh, actually, this is something this is something that I want to document. And so I just quickly grab my, you know, and like I'm in my pajamas and, you know, like, but these are the these are the moments that you want to remember right and so some of them are just very you know um kind of on the fly situations and then some of them are a bit more like i've you know i've got a beautiful dress i'm out on the beach in tofino you know like where i'm having a moment to myself and i'm taking this time for me to look great to feel great and to document where i'm at as a now 40 year old woman and so you know there's there's incredible confidence and um giving in that as well too and i think it's important for my children to see both things mm -hmm. so not only am i celebrating myself as a mother with them but i'm celebrating myself as a woman on my own as well so i love it for anyone who hasn't ever done a self-portrait especially photographers because quite often we're the ones yeah, taking the photos behind. I know and we're always we <laughs> always say oh I'm usually the one behind the camera and we're always just shooting other people yeah. but I think in in the history of my own uh, photography career I may have taken one or two self portraits <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so to me and to anyone else who's listening who's who hasn't consistently taken self portraits what would you say to encourage that creative I think that a lot of it is letting go of control, which is hard for me. Um, I think that you have to just set up in most all, mostly all of our cameras now have interval timers. And so set it up on a tripod, set it up on a stack of books, you know, and a little window light and just let it go every two or three seconds and just be yourself, you know, like look directly into the camera, look off to the side, just, just feel it, put on a little music. You know, it's, it's uncomfortable and really weird at first. Like it is, especially if you're doing it out in, out in the wild, you know, where people are around, like you look like a lunatic, but in the end, like, you know, you come away with these really beautiful images and, you know, not all of them are great. You're going to have double chins and things you don't like about yourself. But I think that the process is really healing and you just have to continue to to go at it and so it doesn't always work out for me and then I try again and but there's always something I can take take from it as well you become really self-aware of your body too like I think over time like I know sort of you know you start to know how to to work, work pose your angles which seems so weird but um, you do become very aware of your body which again when you're shooting any kind of client work weddings it really does help to to be able to give your clients that confidence as well so there's literally no negative to it <laughs> so just try it like just you know 
just go at it. Thank you. And I think for you, Sachin, like you could just set up, you know, when you and you're newly married, like you guys are just having coffee in the morning in your kitchen, like just Mm. sneak that camera around the corner, right? Like, and then just do be yourselves. Often I set up the tripod when we're having Sunday morning breakfast as a family and I just let it go. I let it go for 10 minutes and it captures what it captures. And those are just beautiful, regular moments. And then we're in the frame as well. And it's really special. Love it. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. We'll definitely give that a go for sure. <laughs> Your so... wife's going to be like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so that, yeah, I mean, there can definitely be challenges from, from others, you know, for... mm-hmm. but also just our own minds, right? Like limiting ourselves, get, being in the way, what was your mindset to overcome some of those challenges and what's been the biggest challenge that you've heard others go through, but even yourself, what do you consistently experience and how do you overcome that? In regards to a 365 project or both really, I would say let's, let's do the self portrait because I feel like that would be the the most challenging one. I think the biggest thing is, is like self-image, you know, I think, and I think that we as photographers hear that a lot anyways, like, oh, I don't want to book that session until I lose 20 pounds or, you know, until I lose the baby weight or I don't, you know, I don't look great right now. I don't want to be photographed. And I think that is the biggest thing um, is that nobody wants to be in front of a camera when they're not feeling that they're the, that they are their best selves. Um, I think that what you need to remember is that these photographs are not just for you. They're for the people that love you. And so when I am long gone from this world, my children and my grandchildren will have, you know, all of these images of me at every stage of my life um, to reflect back on. And so whenever I'm feeling not quite my best self, I try and put myself in that mindset and, you know, and, and also how we see ourselves is not how other people see us. So my children don't see any of those things that I worry about. Um, And that's something that I try and you know try and communicate to my clients as well so it's great I love how you as you're sharing you keep reminding us that the impact that this will have on your business and your client work because quite often a lot of creatives photographers even myself is is with we're focused so much on the business aspect of things and wanting it to grow and that consistency finding that elusive ideal client (laughs) right (laughs) All, all of these things and we're and we're looking at the outside to solve the problem but so much of it is actually from within and it's an internal process and then as you gain that confidence and you understand yourself and you understand moments and beauty and imperfections and sounds like you're gaining more and more confidence as you go through then that is reflected into your work and you're better at guiding your clients and Absolutely. the process is is reflected through your own challenges and struggles which is yeah. which is beautiful so Absolutely. amazing okay so how do you continue to push yourself creatively mm. um that is uh that is a great question um you know f- through nine years obviously um you know as we can all imagine nine years of shooting daily there's a lot of mundane moments um and I think that what we have to remember is that even in the mundane moments there is beauty um and so and what we view as mundane is not mundane to our children um or our clients And so that is sort of a common thread that I have to think about all the time. Um, There's other ways, obviously, that I pushed through on some days. There's sort of tips, like tricks that I can sort of amp up my creativity and get that fire going again. Um, Also, seasons are an issue. Like, it's Unfortunately, we start 365 projects in January because they're the most mundane months um, visually. And by March, everybody's like, oh, I don't know if I can keep doing this. And then I just say the spring is coming. The spring is coming and the flowers are blooming and we'll all be getting outside with our cameras soon. Right. So um, 
I think just pushing yourself through those days is a huge challenge and you're indoors a lot. Um, I constantly have to remind myself to focus on the details when your children and your family members are little, there's lots of little details that you don't ever want to forget. And so, you know, those sorts of things are easy to continually shoot so that you can move yourself forward day by day. Um, creatively, I have have done some sort of bigger things. Um, we talked a little bit about me shooting underwater. So I did invest in some um some incredible underwater gear. Um, I'm now an ambassador for that company. So that's pretty awesome because they, um, I'm, I think I'm the only like mom day in the life photographer. Everybody else photographs like whales and sharks and surfers when they're like in Hawaii and then I'm up here in Canada, like, Hey, <laughs> it's me and my kids. Um, so that was a, that's a huge honor that the company, um, believes in what I do so much that they, they brought me on their team. But, uh, you know, I shoot underwater. That's an incredible way to view childhood. Um, and it's an incredible way for my kids to be engaged. Like what kid doesn't want to see themselves diving underwater? Like it's super cool. Um, it's really great for my clients as well. It brings um, a bit of an edge to me as a photographer on the island because not very, like none of us do it. I'm the only one. Um, and then I started shooting with a drone as well, which is just another another viewpoint another way to view our life and my kids and and I bring that into my client work too and so you know there are simple ways with household items and and um you know things that you can do to keep the project moving forward and then there's some of these bigger things that you can sort of invest in to just really immerse yourself a little bit differently in your in your own world right so that's that's great actually uh, sometimes I feel there's a country or a city or a place that I want to explore. And it's more that the camera is taking me along with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be in these places without the camera, but because yeah. I have a camera, I really want to shoot or connect yeah. with that person. And, and so it yeah. sounds like these, these tools that underwater housing or the gear that you use is kind of has that too, because now you have it and yeah. And you can share that with your kids and your family and say, hey, like, where can we go exploring with this yeah. now, right? We've so often said that, like, our our life would be a little bit more boring if I didn't do the 365 project. <laughs> because, like, some Saturdays, I'm like, yeah, I'm not hanging around at home. Like, I'm, I'm done with this place. Like, let's get out. Let's, yeah. it's going to be a beautiful sunset. Let's go hike. Let's bring the camera along. Um, it definitely pushes us to do more things because mm. the camera is just it, it is it leads us along which is yeah. awesome great do any of your kids love photography do, are they are, are they documenting anything themselves do they have their own projects all of them are very creative um we have we're a dual artist household my husband is a coast salish master carver wow. he's world renowned and so my kids have grown up in this home that has two artists parents um who make a living and support their dreams from what we do and so um it's been really great for them to have that um to build from you know I have a son who's graduating this year and you know often the common question is you know what university are you going to and he's like I'm not I'm actually going to see where my creative he's an incredible musician he's an incredible artist and he's got some ideas and he wants to see them through and we're totally supportive of that. So all of them are creative in one way or another. All of them are musical um, and all of them enjoy photography in some way or another. And so I'm a few of my self portraits the kids have actually taken. So, which is wow. pretty awesome. Yeah. That's incredible. Uh, we have a few questions here in the chat about the underwater gear that you use. Yeah. Could you share a little bit about the company? that you're that you're working yeah. with and what the setup I is. actually I actually brought it down hey, great <laughs> there we go so this wow. is uh underwater housing from Aquatech oh, there's the dome so the camera essentially goes inside here hmm. which is pretty awesome it mine it's like a spaceship um but uh they're an incredible company um they also make um 
if you don't want to dive in on that much of an investment right away, because it is significant, and especially if you're only using it for personal use and not um, your business, um, they do, uh, they have a sister company called Access Go that makes underwater housings for your iPhone. And they are incredible. So if you're thinking of like a GoPro, um, I feel like the Access Go, if you've got an iPhone, is a much better option. You have way more control course the iphone like you know 12 whatever they have incredible cameras on them um so that's a great way to kind of dip your feet into mm -hmm. underwater photography without making such a huge investment um but yeah the uh, the housing is it is definitely um a bigger step but it is worth it and when i first bought it and it sat in the box and i stared at it for six months <laughs> <laughs> i mean nobody that wants is. to put like you know, nobody wants to put their $5,000 camera under the water. It's a bit daunting, but I finally did it. And, you know, like, of course we're seasonal here. I'm not in the ocean, you know, in winter, but, you know, we've dipped into the local pool and, mm -hmm. you know, it's a great way to just be creative on a rainy Saturday and, or in the bathtub. Yeah, <laughs> so, totally. Well, the images no. speak for themselves. So right? <laughs> definitely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Is, does it work with any body or is it specific? Yeah. For yeah. So well, Aquatech okay. has an extensive lineup. Um, okay. This one, it was for, is for my um, Canon 5D Mark IV and I'm upgrading this year um, for my Canon R5. So yeah. um, I'll be happy to get uh, the mirrorless in the water this year. I'm really yeah. excited to see the difference in that. So incredible. You yeah. mentioned um, a bit around social media and, uh, and your children earlier, Shona is uh here with us in the chat from france and she said oh, she uh yeah she says your 365 work is out of this world actually been following oh. your work since the days of clicking mums oh wow okay yeah <laughs> i don't have uh what year was that oh well i started with them i mean i still like i still do lots of work i mean that when it was clicking mums that was years and years ago um wow. but i still i still do lots of work with them but Amazing. Yeah. So, so Shauna asks, uh, I don't have children yet myself, but know that my spouse is hesitant about our future children online. Were you and your partner always on the same page about that? And if not, how did you navigate it? Uh, I think we were always on the same page. Um, John is a little more hesitant on himself. It took him a few years, like, um, for me to be photographing him and then posting. Um, but and I think now we've had the conversation now that we have teens and preteens, um, we actually had that conversation before I started my ninth year, because I was starting to see a little bit of pushback from them. I wasn't wanting this to be like a negative experience. And so we had the conversation about a, you know, did they want to continue on and then B, are they okay with being online? Um, so it's an ever evolving, constant conversation. I do know that lots of people choose to not put their family online or they choose to not put faces online. So that's another option too, is that you're posting faceless photos of your children and you can get super creative with that. I actually have lots of clients that allow me to share, but only the faceless photos that I take during our session. And it's actually, it's kind of fun to just sort of figure out how you can still share with not being as vulnerable online. Yeah. So um, I think it's all about your comfort level. And, and I, I think you can always kind of try it. And if you're, if you're seeing some red flags and some feelings are coming up that aren't positive, then just pull back. Mm. Oh, great advice. Ashley, you know, so, I love what you said there about pushing yourself creative creatively yeah I love what you shared about pushing yourself creatively when you have a limitation and mm -hmm. so not being able to show faces for example you know that that image that was picked up by National Geographic mm -hmm. one of your sons I think it's your son is yeah. is not in the frame you can barely see one of the other ones you can just see the eyes which is so beautiful but you yeah. wouldn't be able to recognize you know that yeah, uh, yeah. person on the street and those I, I love that a limitation can actually generate so much more or accelerate one's creativity oh, because of 100%. because of a limitation mm. and that's even constantly something we say in my home is that you know the kids never tell me that they're bored number one because i'll give them a job to do <laughs> but i always say like boredom out of boredom comes creativity every single time so as soon as you're feeling like uh then you have to like really think you have have to stoke mm. the fire a little bit that's when some like incredible things come out of 
out of your out of your boredom or your lack of creativity right yeah def- definitely it's it's good to get bored <laughs> for sure it is yeah that, absolutely yeah, yeah have that time space and then things bubble up from beneath the surface and yeah so many underwater housing puns uh, <laughs> so many so many <laughs> but it's but it's but it's great <laughs> all right <laughs> What is the focus for 2023 for yourself, your family, your projects? Shed a bit of light into what 2023 looks like for you. Um, you know, I think 2023 is all about, um, you know, self-acceptance and changes. We're in a very, um, we're in a very uh, big season of change here in our home. And, um, you know, we've got, kids that are going through puberty and graduating and you know I just recently turned 40 and and I think that um a lot of it is just being continuing through the project and being gentle on ourselves you know my my daughter is going through some some self image issues and as as her self is changing her body's changing and and it's brought up a lot of conversations and and often you know, um, I love our big family moments when all five of us together and I'm photographing everybody, but I also love those times when I just take one kid out and, you know, when we've talked about this, that sometimes they don't want to go out with me, you know, especially first thing in the morning when the light is beautiful, nobody wants to be dragged off the couch, but we, we always have a great time. We always, I find that time to connect with them is really special, just one-on-one. And so I think just 2023 is all about just sort of carrying that forward and keeping that connection as, as my kids get older. And, and um, yeah, I think that's, that's just kind of where we're at. You, at this age, you start to lose them a little bit. This is where they start to break free, which is beautiful and wonderful all of the same at the same time as being scary and so we're just trying to, we're trying to keep the connection. The goal is for me to complete 10 years. Um, that feels like a good, like, okay, now it's time to step back. And I don't really know what that's going to look or feel like <laughs> at this point, uh, shooting daily has been, you know, sort of an innate process. It almost just feels like breathing. Right. Mm. Um, so we'll see what that looks like when I, when I have to stop, but Love it. Looking forward it's like to it. It feels like a good transition time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. So you have a course as well, right? On uh, the 365 yeah. project. Can you share a little bit yeah. around that? If somebody's interested in in that course, but also kicking off with a project, how is the course designed? How can it help them uh through the course that? is I I my put my whole heart and soul into that course. Um, mm. and I shared every everything that I've learned and how I've pushed forward and how to tackle all sorts of, of, you know, stumbling blocks, roadblocks that you come against using a, doing a 365. Um, you know, I share, um, a list of creativity boosters. And like we talked about some that are really simple that you can use at home, like a plastic bag or fairy lights, which I talk about double exposures, uh, um, you know, self portraits, The course um, not only is, you know, extensive in in imagery and words, but there's also four different um, shooting videos, Um, one at home with me and my kids, another one out in the wild where we're out, you know, we're out at a beach and I'm and how I kind of capture everybody together and doing all the things and then um, underwater, there's an underwater segment, and there's also a drone segment. And so it just really encapsulates everything that I do. And, um, it's been extremely well received. I think it's been out now for maybe three or four years. Um, people seem to really love it. And that just brings me so much joy. And a lot of people have bought it and then they revisit it whenever they, they need to, to fuel that fire again. Um, I kinda, I do, I do get everybody all fired up. So, um, it is, it's a, it's a good tool to have. And, uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm actually really proud of it. Amazing. So. Well done. Well done, Ashley. <clears throat> so we'd love to end off with a few of these uh, quick fire questions that, that oh we have each week. And the first one is, do you have a favorite book, favorite photography book or other? I do have a favorite book. Um, 
I picked uh, She's Come and Done by Wally Lamb. I'm a big fan of Wally Lamb, more his earlier works. Um, it's one of my favorite books. And the photography book that I picked up that I really love after watching the documentary is um, Pete Souza, the one with um, Barack Obama. Obama. Mm. Barack Obama. Like I just, yeah, I, yeah, incredible, incredible images. Um, and I actually met uh, Michelle Obama's photographer at a conference once and I picked oh, up wow. her book as well so I just love that immersive world of just being the documentarian yeah. um, just incredible and of yeah. course such an incredible family so yeah. I was really inspired by by both their work so yeah I, I was able to hear Pete Caesar speak at a conference once oh, in, really? uh, yeah in, in, uh, <laughs> in a Portland. funny guy yeah <laughs> It was great though, you know, just to go through the, hear the images, hear the stories behind the images. Oh, the, book, yeah. the book is fantastic. I have a copy as well. And uh, yeah, yeah, really highly recommend that, especially, yeah, if you've seen any of his work and you, and you like it, it's, it's a book worth picking up for sure. One I love, he's a bit cheeky on Instagram. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> when he's talking about, like, he's just, he gets these like little comments in there and they're just cheeky. And I just, I, I appreciate that. So yeah. definitely <laughs> when Trump was president, I remember. Oh yeah. I remember reading his, uh, yeah. his posts and they were, they were fantastic for sure. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned a bit around your gear, underwater housing, things like that, your drone that you have as well. Is there any other kind of gadget or fun tools that you have outside of those two that you love as you're shooting? Um, I also use a lens baby. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I really love, uh, uh, my lens baby. I used to free lens a lot. And so, I was really comfortable with free lensing. The lens baby just really, you know, gives you that creativity without, you know, having Dust. free lensing can be quite fickle. Um, so I, I really enjoy a lens baby. And so I use a lens baby quite often as well. It's usually, if I, it's my 24, my 85, and then I usually throw my lens baby in there as well when we're just, when we're headed out. So yeah. um, that's definitely another tool that I use for sure. I think that was one of the first lenses that I bought myself as well as really? just kind of like a fun one. Yeah. 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 And it's one that I've never got rid of. I don't think I'll ever sell it. It's just, no. uh, I've sold other lenses, but for some reason, and I don't, I don't actually use it that much, but this conversation has definitely inspired me to uh, pick it, pick it up. Yeah, again. pick it up. I think like, even like I use my, I don't use it a whole ton with client work, but when I do use it, I use it for my lifestyle newborn sessions. So when I go into somebody's home and I'm just documenting their, their, the, those, those moments, those first moments at home, they are often very sort of hazy and foggy. And so I'll bust it out, you know, when a mom is just breastfeeding quietly in the corner, it just brings that like extra element of like dream, like, mm. you know, that really speaks to that, that season of life. So I definitely throw it in my bag for those sessions as well. Awesome, honestly. All right. Uh, any favorite software that you is like a go-to for yourself as a photographer? and even a filmmaker. Yeah, well, I mean, Lightroom is my go-to for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use Photoshop at all. Um, so Lightroom, and then I, I, for my filmmaking, I use Premiere Pro. So I'm, I'm an Adobe girl. Um, and then uh, an app that I've got that I really love is uh, the Focos app, F-O-C-O-S. And and it's a great little app for adding some creativity to your to your images, even your cell phone images. And it's actually got some lens baby filters on it that are pretty cool. So those are some sort of little creativity things right. that I use on some of my images. Amazing. And favorite movie? <laughs> uh, Legends of the Fall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brad Pitt and a Montana landscape and that score will get me every time. It's just a good, it's such a great movie. It's one of my favorites for sure. Amazing. So. Amazing. Ashley, thank you so much for uh, giving an insight into your life, your family, sharing so openly. Um, really looking forward to staying connected and to following your journey. All the best for, yeah. for year 10 as well. Year um, 10 next year. Yep. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. incredible. And uh, yeah, look forward to connecting with you again soon. Thank you so much, Sachin. Thank you for having me. It was awesome. Pleasure.